Rusty, what's happening, brother? Not a lot. I just it's uh, been. It feels like forever. I remember, you know, seeing you around. I, I I don't even know how far I can go back. You know, you go back probably way more than I, I've been in bodybuilding. So let me ask you this. This is just, this is something I always wanted to ask you. How long? I mean, how old are you right now? And how long have you been bodybuilding? Like seriously, bodybuilding. Okay. Well, I'll be 58 on Saturday. This Saturday. Oh, wow. Yeah. So. Um, but my, my first show, I was like 14 years old. Oh, really? So you, yeah. you competed as a teenager? Yeah. In fact, I won the Teenage Arizona three times in a row. So are you local all your life? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, I grew up kind of in Tucson, you know. Oh, but Arizona, though. Yeah. So you're a real Arizonan. Yeah, I, I <laughs> remember back when the AU and the NPC were still fighting over rights for shows and stuff. Yeah. So at 14, you competed on, on, on a stage at a bodybuilding show. Yeah. And won. I didn't win, no. Uh, oh. It took me three years before I won. I won when I was 17. Oh, okay. When I was 18 and then when I was 19. So back then it was AAU? Yeah, they had AAU back then, yeah. It was the Mr. Titles. Who was, who, was, who was running the show back then? Carlos Rodriguez was running all the AAU stuff back then. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so... So tell me about your, your your long career. So you started as a teenager at 14 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, how did you turn pro? What year was it at what show? Well, I, I turned pro at the Masters Nationals in 2004, okay. right? But as the rules have it, back in the day, you had to win an overall to qualify to go to the Nationals, right? Right. But back then, you had to win the overall to go to, to the even nationals? go to the nationals. Yeah. Oh, okay. So today it's like the top three. Or right. Today yeah. they'll give the top two or whatever. And you know, back then there was literally only bodybuilding. Okay. And so I would have to win a show, like you know the uh, mid USA or something, or the Arizona or the Western Regional or something, and then I would go and hit the nationals in the USA. And so I did that nine years in a row before mm. I turned pro. Wow. So I, I kind of got pretty good at peeking on the road, you know, knowing how to, you know, handle the So when traveling. you said you got your pro card as a Masters, was that like the Masters Nationals? Yeah, it was Masters Nationals in, in Pittsburgh. 2004. And that's back when they only gave away one pro card right. for, for that show. And I, I won my pro card as a super heavyweight. Really? Yeah. And I mean, I mean not, I'm not the biggest guy around. I never have been, but... You know, I was actually a super heavyweight. How, how do you stay in shape so this long? And, and you don't look 58. I mean, when I look at your body, you know, nothing says 50. Nothing says basically <laughs> 40. How do you? Because I, mean, I know how hard it is because I, I fell off the last year. Well, <laughs> My body just finally said, all right, this is it. You have to learn how to train differently. I mean, when yeah. you're younger, obviously, you can handle some serious weights and stuff. And, you know, and. I think it's the different goal that you have in mind because like when you're trying to get as big and huge as possible, mm. well, you got a different mindset and you're doing different things than saying, okay, I'm going to try to be the best quality that I can be. You know, I'm, you know, I'm about 225 pounds right now. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, re, you know, back in the day I was up to 270 in the off season sometimes, you know? Yeah. I remember so. seeing you like, like, like 10, 12, 15 years ago, you were still a little bit bigger in off season, but now you somewhat leaner. I mean, you always look good, even in off season. You were never fat. I don't. I never seen you fat. Yes, you know. But uh, now it seems like you you stay a little bit leaner, a little bit closer, well, now closer to I'm, contest. I'm about ten and a half weeks out from that Masters Pro World. I'm that makes go ahead sense. That makes sense. Do that, and uh, um, you know, I did a show last year. I did the Masters Legion, you know, and I ended up winning the fifty to sixty age group uh -huh. in the pros. You know, so they have more age groups in the masters. Yeah, now they they're doing some splitting up the pros into the age groups, which I think is a little more fair because you know someone who's you know close to sixty shouldn't be competing against someone who's only forty. You yeah. know, because they're starting <laughs> masters at thirty five. Do you think that's, well, they, that's they, wrong? That's called junior masters. They're doing junior yeah, masters. But, but, yeah, but come on. I don't. I don't really agree with it, but yeah. you know, it's whatever the promoters can make their money on. You know, and if it's if the competitor feels it's more fair, you'll have more competitors. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I don't, it's it's hard for me, you know, because when they dropped it down to thirty five, I was like, this is where people, let's especially in the, at the uh, Masters Nationals, or not Masters Nationals, at the North Americans where they also have Masters. Right. People compete in the Open and the Masters. Right. I believe Masters should be a Masters, which means you should have literally you should be at least forty or over. Yep. Maybe even higher than that. Yeah. Because nowadays you see. 
the the average age of bodybuilders, like back in the days, people retired in their early 30s, mid 30s. Mm -hmm. Now people don't get really started. Right. Until yeah. their mid-30s. So now it's up in the 40s where people look at, when you look at the Olympia lineup, there's people on stage. They look the better. Mid, in yeah, the and they're, 40s. you know, I mean, like, so, for instance, Sean Roden, how good he looked. Right. You know. Yeah. So I think they should move the age up to maybe 45 or 50 as to be in a master. And that's just my, my opinion. A I mean, master should only be to able me. to compete as a master. You should, right, if right. you're still in the open, then you shouldn't be able to compete in the masters because that's not fair. You know? Well, you know what I thought was weird about the Legion show was they put all the age groups together and made us compete for an overall. Oh, really? Right? And so David Henry had won the the 40 to 50 group, I guess, and then I had won the 50 to 60 group. And so I'm, I'm standing next to David, you know? <laughs> oh. And so I was like, okay, but, but we're, you know, it's like you never saw that in, in any of the, like, let's say, the Arizona shows, you never saw the age groups competing against each other. Right. I mean, if I they mean, do that, seems... then they should let it just to be one category and just let them all compete <laughs> in one class. So they had an overall at the yeah, end. Yeah, they had an overall. They competed all the age groups against each other. So the, the guy who was in the 70 or whatever, the uh, I was like, okay. this. Yeah, he was know. just there to be there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, but. now, but people know Rusty Jeffers. And Rusty Jeffers is a household name in the bodybuilding industry. And uh, especially your posing, the way you pose, the way you transition from poses into other poses. This is like, you know, old school. I call it real old school bodybuilding. And uh, who, when you started bodybuilding, well, or when you started posing, who did you look up to? It was guys like Frank Zane and, um, you know, I mean, even Arnold, you know, those guys had grace when they posed, mm. you know. And um, the, the thing was, Back in those days, the like the I want to say the when you know my shows were you know early eighties you know late seventies early eighties. I mean, literally a third of the score was your posing routine. Right. So like like you could actually have somebody who had a little better physique, but you could actually beat them by posing. Mm. You know what I mean? Right, so right. they they scored the posing as part of it. You know, I remember that too. So, you know, if you had a stellar posing routine and, you know, you could free pose like crazy, you could actually, you know, you know, beat somebody who actually probably had a better physique yeah. than you, you yeah. know, I remember and that's that. where we learned it was because if you didn't, if you couldn't really pose well, you weren't really considered to be a good bodybuilder, mm. you know, but you know, but you know, the reason why they stopped judging the posing routine, well, they had a vote back. I remember when I turned pro. In 04, they had a vote like coming up in 2005 or 2006, I think it was. And they let us all vote to say, should we judge the routines or not? And I, most of the guys said they didn't want to have to judge the routines because they you, wanted it to be all just based on the mandatories. Right. But did you do you have an idea of why they stopped it, really? What the reason was? I don't really know. I just thought yeah. that maybe it was too hard that, you know, I, to, I, 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 because I, it's more of an opinion rather than a... I have an idea. I have an idea of why. why. Because the posing routine, because when you look at the shows, because they stopped it, I don't know, 10 years ago. Because I remember I was still competing when there was, you know... Uh, it was probably uh, more there than was 10 a years ago. symmetry round, yep. muscularity round, yep. then there was a posing, right. and then there was a uh, final top six um, um, comparisons. Mm -hmm. So, But they stopped the posing round because people won the posing round. Like, you know, when you look back at Dorian Yates' routine, did he look like he had the best posing routine? Not necessarily. There was a Sean Ray, there was a Kevin Lerone. Right. But he won the posing round. Why? Because they judge the physique. Right. They still judge the physique, which means if you have the best physique, you're going to automatically win the posing round. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's the way they saw it, and that's why they stopped it, because yeah. there was too much confusion yeah. that how can he win the posing round? And the only show where they still do it is at the Arnold now. Really? They, they judge the posing round. So remember uh, Sergio got the yes. best poser at one. No, no. What? He got the award. Or oh, the award. For the best routine. Oh, But the gotcha. best posing okay. round was won by Nick Walker. I mean, really? the, uh, the opposing round. Really? If I'm not mistaken. Okay. So, no, that's why they do the award, which means the most entertaining. Yeah. The, you know. the thing that, you know, I remember Carlos, Carlos Rodriguez saying, you know, if you start dancing on stage, we're going to turn your music off. Really? You know, he's like, this is not a dance contest, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and I mean, now you got a lot of people doing, you know, different, you know popping locks and whatnot, which, which like, like Melvin, you know, Melvin. he would throw that into a routine and it would look freaking great. You know what I mean? 
Was he one of the greatest posers of all time? I think Melvin Anthony was probably one of the greatest posers. Me too. I mean, Absolutely. phenomenal physique. You know, he he had everything you needed to be a champion. And I mean, he had everything. He had he had grace in his posing, and he could hit those classical shots like right. through, like you know. And he had that great taper, and you know, he created a picture. When you yeah. watch his routine, he yeah. created well, he told a picture and a story. Yeah, exactly. When you see a routine, you want to see kind of the story of you know, kind of what this guy went through, yeah. you know, and what he's going to show you. Yeah, you I know? think he, he would probably love to hear that coming from you because that means something. So now, when you when you look at the guys today and their posing routines, what, what do you see? How do you feel when you see them posing and hitting shot, walking from side to side, and you know, it doesn't make me think that they have great skill as a. As putting together a posing routine, like, a, you know, choreographing anything. Do they have an artistic side to them? You know, mm. I mean, there's guys that hit some nice shots and stuff. But, you know, to, to really choreograph the whole routine so it flows and looks nice, it's, I don't see a lot of that going on these days. Yeah. But you, you, know? but you, tr you, you do a lot of posing clinics. A lot of people come to you for posing. Even I did in 2009. Mm -hmm. Because you, 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 you have a way of teaching someone who is stiff, fucking just <laughs> stupid... You can teach this person how to transition, and you know, and you bring it across very easy to understand. But do you ever see people where you said, you know what, there's no way that he will ever pose? Well, here's the thing. You know, everybody's got their own level and their own awareness of where their body is, kind mm. of. And you can you can take that from wherever they're at and make them a little bit better. I mean, if it's taken to breaking it down to just one move at a time, just break it down. Mm. You know, because I mean, a posing routine ain't that complicated really i mean you, you know most of the ones that you know i'm coaching with people that are doing national shows they don't even have a minute you know right, so, right. I mean, you do anything for a minute right i mean yeah. you could learn anything for a minute yeah well you would probably put 60 70 poses in a minute well i learned not to do that okay i mean that was one of my mistakes in the past <laughs> oh you're too like, fast yeah i was too fast and they couldn't see my my physique because i was just moving mm. right which was interesting to watch but it wasn't gonna score me any points you know, yeah. as, as, you know, so I learned how to slow it down. I've made, you know, I've learned the hard way on making some mistakes throughout the years Man. and I've learned how to weed those mistakes out. And, you know, now I know how to teach it to other people. People always ask how I got here. I was willing to work just a little harder than everyone else every damn day. If I can have hundreds of hours back, you know, I'm going to grab them. Spending hours prepping chicken, rice, and vegetables, F that. I rely on perfect nutrition. I rely on trifecta. So when you look at the guys today, is there anyone that you would pick out and like, yeah, I would like to take him and just teach him how to post and make him even better? You know, I always thought that, you know, if if I could get a hold of Rami, I could. <laughs> <laughs> he's, and he has improved, though. I'll give him that. He has yeah. improved a lot of stuff. But there's some stuff that he could do that would just make him look like a so, freaking So champion, what would you do you with know? a big guy like this? I mean, all this, 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 this well, it small depends man on, poses. It, it depends on their mobility. Mm. You know, are they going to be able to do those twisting angle back shots? Are they going to be able to get down on their, you know, into lunge? positions that look right mm -hmm. you know what I mean and and the, another thing too it's like he's pretty flexible you know you, you got to find what looks right right you know because you know there's a lot of people that do posing and they have their feet way too wide and they you know that just looks awkward you mm -hmm. got to take the awkward out you know in order to make the pose look right yeah. you know yeah, that's funny that you say that because uh, maybe next time when he gets here, we'll we'll get you guys together so you can see what you can do with him you know and I found out like with the posing workouts it's like here's the deal Unless you can nail those mandatories, mm -hmm. no matter how good your routine is, it's really not going to matter much. Right, yeah. You know, and so, you know, I've learned to really focus in on those mandatories and make sure people do them correctly. Right. That's what know? I tell them all the and time. And know mandatories. how to squeeze, know how to breathe, you know, all that stuff that comes into play with, with those mandatory poses. And practice them enough to make a difference, you yeah. know. I mean, right now I'm doing 10 rounds of mandatories a day, and I'm 10 weeks out. You, you do know? 10 rounds a day. Yeah. And yeah. each round lasts about two and a half minutes. Yeah. So you put so a, I only just spend a lot 25 of minutes. I'm not in the moment. Not even a but, half an hour. But but tell the people to, who listen that what does posing do to your physique? How much you know detail can you bring out just by posing? People oh, don't yeah. understand. You can, you can really bring out a lot of detail in the last few weeks by squeezing and flexing. I mean, it's an exercise on its own. Yeah. You know. So you do the 10 rounds in one session? 
Well, yeah. you split them up in one session. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I time my round. And well, here's the thing when you do a round of mandatories, it's got to be like a sprint because it has to look right. You, no one's going to make you hold a pose for mm -hmm. five minutes straight. Right. You know, I mean, it's not going to be productive. OK, because mm -hmm. that's not what they see. What, they, what do the judges see? OK, a scan of a front double. Right. How long does that last? Never more than a minute, probably 15 seconds even sometimes. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, nowadays seconds. it's a little bit longer because they, they do compare them a little bit longer. Well, yeah, well, then they're moving people around and stuff. Right. But when you're hitting your mandatory poses, literally anything more than a minute, you're kind of like yeah. it's becoming a different type of an exercise. Right. Mm -hmm. OK, like you wouldn't have a sprinter doing marathon runs. Right. Right. You would teach them how to sprint better. Right. That's what you need to do in the posing. You need to teach them how to squeeze harder and more efficiently during just that short period of time that they're going to do it for. Mm -hmm. Then move, you know, then move to the next one. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And you got to do enough of it to make a difference. You know, and I found out that if you're not posing, you know, 10 rounds a day, you're probably not going to make a difference. Yeah. I, you know? and, and, and I tell people all the time, I said, listen, when it gets when it's close and people start moving you around. And you got to do two, three rounds back to you back. You better be in shape for it. If you're yeah. not in shape, you don't be up you know, there the first one who fades loose. Tans, tans yeah. running off. Yeah, you. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and that's that's that was the thing with Rami when uh, uh, 2020 when he won the Olympia because they moved him around so much yeah. that everybody started fading around him and he stood there like a statue and that's that's what helped him yeah, a lot. He did a good job with it. You know, and and yeah. I told him I said you got because you know you know how it is when you diet and you know and you do your cardio and you dehydrate. Oh yeah, when you're freaking, you don't want to pose. Shit, the last thing you want to do is go <laughs> spend some extra calories on something that's hard. Yeah, and I forced him every day. It was like on the clock. Uh -huh. First thing after cardio, we pose. We pose during the day and then mm -hmm. right after the training. Yeah. You know, it's just a must, three yeah. times a day minimum. Well, another thing, too, it's like, you know, before Sean Roden passed, I was I talked to him at the Legion show, and I'm like, listen, you know, you got one of the better t presentations in the sport, you know, I mean, what, you know, what do you do? Hmm. And he's like, well, I pose a half an hour, you know, before each meal. And you know, he's like, like five or six meals a day. I'm like, yeah, you pose a half an hour before every meal. I mean, that's a freak of a lot of posing, man. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I used to, I, I try to do that. I always told myself, you got to do it. Just do two, three rounds or at least three rounds before each meal. Well, another thing, too, it's like the last month before the show, you better be a posing fool. You yeah. know what I mean? If, yeah. You know, in order to make it work right. Some people just don't understand. They focus all on their training, on their or diet, their cardio, not or their, what, it, what it's all, all about. They're putting all their effort into doing their stair stepper and nothing yeah. into their posing. And it's yeah. like, well, you should reverse that. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So so, so your goal is now, you said you're competing in 10 and a half weeks? Yeah, I'm hit that Masters Pro World. I guess uh, Gary, Gary Udit's running that one in Pittsburgh. You know, oh. I, I, I'm, what big show are they holding that with? I don't remember. Uh, Pittsburgh. When is it? It's uh, July 24th. My, the show, Isn't it the Junior Nationals the same weekend? I'm Hold not on, sure. Let me, I'll I look can it look up. that up. But, uh, but yeah, it's the, they got the Masters going on the 24th, which is actually a Sunday, you know, and they're having the show all the whole weekend, you know, you know so they Friday, got, Saturday, it's, Sunday. It's in conjunction with some other show. Mm-hmm. And you said it was when? It's my show's July 24th. July 24th. Let's yeah, see. and so the 23rd and the 22nd are... Um, Pro schedule. Let me see. Yeah, it's a Gary Udit show. And it's going to be in that Pittsburgh, that little uh, Station Square, whatever they call that. You know, at the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, this is where they have Sheraton. the North Americans. Yep, they have the, the North Masters Americans Nationals. and all that. Yep. Okay, let me see. We got here. You said August. No, it's July. July what? July twenty fourth, the weekend of the twenty fourth. Oh, 24th. here it is. It's in pit. Yeah, it, it doesn't say that this is in conjunction with anything. No. It looks like twenty twenty two IFBB Pro Masters World Men's Bodybuilding. Over forty, over 50, 60, 70, over eighty. Holy jeez. Over eighty. Is there anybody eighty competing now? I can bring my dad and let him step on stage <laughs> in some trunks. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it looks like to be a, just just a single event. Hmm. Okay. Good. I'm glad they're putting this together. And twenty thousand? No, wait a minute. There's no prize money. No prize money. Um. What what they're doing? I mean, what they did? Like, I competed in the Pittsburgh Pro in 2014, which I won, and everybody had to put in like 300 bucks, and then they gave it to like the top three winners. You know what I mean? Oh, so you had to pay to compete? Right, but it was it's kind of like a rodeo. You know, you throw your money in, and if you win in the top, whatever, you get something. Yeah, but I, I, I don't know <laughs> if I agree with that. I mean... I'm, I'm just hoping maybe to qualify for the Masters in 23, you know what I mean? 
because they're having a master's O in 23. Yeah, but you don't need to qualify. You qualify by age, I guess. Well, I know, but, I mean, don't you have to have a point system or something? I mean, shouldn't can they just let anybody in? Because before the regular Olympia was invite only or you had to have points or whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah, I think they, I think they haven't decided yet they haven't decided exactly yet. how this works. I mean, Jake might be here later. It'll be a good question for him. Mm-hmm. And uh, hopefully they just they literally res- restrict this to ma- real, true Masters only. Yeah. Which means if she's still active competing in the Open, you shouldn't be able to compete in the, the Masters Olympia because it's just not fair. I think there should be uh-huh. guys like you, like real Masters who don't really run around and, you know, compete in the Olympia in the Open still. Well, and another thing, too, it's like I heard, like, you know, <laughs> Dexter's already training for it. No, you know? Dexter's not doing it. And I'm like, well, okay, well, he's pretty much a shoe in because he still looks pretty freaking great, yeah. you know? No, Dexter's not comp- <laughs> Dexter's done. There's no, really? I don't think there's a show on this planet that can get Dexter to come back. He's already won everything anyway, so. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So when you look at bodybuilding nowadays and compare it to back in your days, I mean, you're still here, so it's still you, but if you compare <laughs> it back to the, let's say, 80s and 70s, you mm-hmm. know, do you think the sport is getting better the athletes are getting better, or oh, yeah. what do well, you I mean, see? The the physiques are getting so much more massive. There's mm. so much more, you know, def- definition and striations now. You know, I mean, you had your few guys back in the day who, you know, really could master it well, you mm-hmm. know. But, uh, it, you know, it seems like there's a lot more guys that are big and shredded nowadays, mm-hmm. you know. And, you know... You know, it's just sign of the times. I mean, you look at vehicles from the 1970s and, and look, compare them to yeah. some of the high-end vehicles now, and they're totally different animals, you know what I mean? But bigger is not always better. And, uh, you know, we, we have a lot there needs of talks to be a, lately. There needs to be a balance between, yeah. you know, size and, and quality. You know? So maybe so maybe your 70s and 80s, yes. But if you compare it to the 90s and the 90s, early 2000s. Oh, God, good people. I mean, you yeah. look at guys like uh, Charles Claremont. Oh, yeah, that wow. guy was phenomenal. You know, yeah. and look at Kowak, Eduardo Kowak. Eduardo, you know, yeah. I mean, those guys were great, you know. Yeah. When you, yeah, it, especially Charles. Charles stood out for, to me. Because he has beautiful symmetry. Yeah. Always peeled. I mean, all the guys were peeled back in the 90s. Right, right. They had good, So what do you think and nobody, that is? And, and it didn't seem like anybody had a waistline back then. Yeah. Big, huge waistline back then. It seemed so, like it so, was, you know, so you know all the errors. So, so what are you doing anything different from back what you used to do back in the days to now when it comes to, you know, enhancement? Is there, or, well, or are you still the same old school guy that you... That you know, I, I went through Milos. I, you know, at the, at the time you were going through Milos... I was having him kind of coach me, you mm-hmm. know, but I mean, I wasn't as extensive as you were. I mean, just I, he just saw me every couple of weeks, you know. Right. And so I learned a lot, you know, and I, I've, I've, you know, had, you know, Charles Glass take me through a couple of things. And, you know, so I kind of learned some of the newer stuff, like around, you know, at, once I turned pro in 04, I'm like, okay, I need to learn some, I need to start putting my head to this game. Right. You know what I mean? To see what I can do. So I learned some more things about it and stuff. But I mean, you know, there's a lot of diminishing returns on how much stuff you can take. And, you know, I mean, sure, everybody's pushed their limit to see what they can get away with and stuff, mm. you know. But, you know, I, I think you got to have respect for the for the juice and know, you know, what really what excessive is and what actually works for you. you right. Know? And I, I found out that moderate amounts of stuff usually work better for me because anything, yeah. you know, I've tried going really hard and heavy on stuff. And I remember bulking out at two, 270 and, you know, just needing a spot to tie my shoe because I'd get out of breath every five right, minutes. Right, you know? right. I'm like, okay, I don't like feeling like this. <laughs> I think people should listen to, to, to guys like you who's been around for so long and still here, still in shape, and still alive. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because especially, you know, especially yeah. what we see in the last couple of years, we lost so many guys mm-hmm. uh, on the scene. And, and, and it worries me because... You know, when I, you know, and you, you coach people too, right? So mm-hmm. you know what some of these guys do and they don't even compete. Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, guys, what are you doing, man? I mean, this is so unnecessary. Well, I, I, I used to train under Casey Vieter when I was a teenager. Mm-hmm. I, I used to do his yard work. So he would, he would uh, train me, right? For and the people that don't know who Casey is, look him up. Casey Vieter. Him and <laughs> Arthur Jones did the Colorado experiment way back when. Anyhow. I got him later on in his career when uh, he he had just competed against Chris uh, Dickerson in mm-hmm. 83, was it, for the Olympia. And anyhow, um, Casey showed me the video that his girlfriend took when Dickerson won. And it was all boo. The whole place was booing. 
And then, you know, Chris Dickerson looked kind of thing. He goes, now, here's the Joe Weider version. Oh. <laughs> and it was all cheering. And I was like, really? I'm like, no way. You know, because I guess he was favored to win that year, but he didn't right. get second. But still, second in the Olympics. So you trained under him? Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, no, no. When I was, you know, when I was younger. And, uh, you know, he was like, look, you know, he didn't believe me when I told him like my first, my, my first cycle was. It was a quarter of a cc a deca. Right. Once, once a week. And he's like, no, oh, come on, you're doing more than that. And I'm like, nope, that's what I'm doing, you right, know. Right. And I'm like, well, I thought it was a compliment. Quarter that, of a cc, which was back then, back then, I think it was 100 milligrams only or 50. Yeah, it wasn't They had much. 50 and 100. It there was no much. 200 milligrams. No, 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 there wasn't. No, it was, it was a baby, a little yeah. baby cycle. But, you know, um, you know um, he was like, listen, you know, in, if, if the only way you're ever going to be happy is by winning shows and being involved in bodybuilding, well, I say go ahead and do it. Mm -hmm. That's what he told me, you know. And he goes, but, you know, it's like if it's just something to do or whatever, it's like there's a lot of people that shouldn't be doing stuff. Right. You know, he said you can't rev your body up, you know, and like if you're going to race your car around and put all these racing parts on it and stuff, you can't race it around all the time and expect it to last a long time. Right, right. You know, and so I kind of took heed of that where I was like, oh, okay, you yeah. know, interesting, uh, you know, because, you know, even back then, he, they had a basically, a, I don't want to say a, a scale on how far you could push it, you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> but when you look at the older guys, you know, they're all still around. Yeah, a lot of them. You know, are, yeah, they, yeah. they all still around, and if they did die for whatever reason, it wasn't. But it was not steroid related, you know. So yeah. that's why it's it's, it's really well, scary. Here's the thing: heart disease. I mean, it it killed more people in twenty one than COVID did. Yeah, right? yeah. You know? And I mean, I think that you know, if it's in your genetics, it's like you know, Monterazzo. You know, he ended up dying of some kind of heart thing. You know. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. You know, and actually, Casey Vieter died of some kind of heart thing, and I think it was in their family. You know, congenital. Yeah heart you know but how, how old was he when he died he was only 63 or something oh, okay I yeah you know yeah but you know i mean you shouldn't be dying in your 30s and in your 40s oh hell no, no. you know so this is what we see now and this is re really scary and i hope that a lot of the younger guys that well i, I choose hope there's bodybuilding I, I hope there's not a knee-jerk reaction with the legalities of it because you know back in before 1992 juice was pretty much wasn't really illegal right mm. But then they made the legalities of it, and then they started enforcing it all. And they put, you know, all kinds of guys that really probably weren't really criminals, but just wanted to do juice were getting right. locked up, you know. And I don't know if we want to do that again, you know. Yeah. That might not be the, you know, it's not going to make anybody any safer because, you know. <laughs> do you, what do you think should be done now in order to prevent uh, what's happening? Well, I think it's an education thing, mm -hmm. you know. I think, you know, everybody's different too, you know, like the same thing that might kill somebody might not kill somebody else, right? So, you know, it's there's got to be a more of an education thing about it. And it's like, I think it's too easy to get stuff nowadays, you know. I mean, you can order stuff on the, on the internet, comes right to your freaking house. Oh, really? You know, it's like, I'm like, you know, I remember, you know, people getting stuff sent to their house and they'd have to, you know, drive it around in their trunk of their car for three weeks to make sure they weren't being followed <laughs> and stuff, you know? Yeah. And nobody's scared no more. <laughs> they order stuff online, but, you know, don't, I would be worried about the shit today because most of it is, yeah, I don't, don't want to well, I don't want to say fake, but severely underdosed. Yeah, and yeah. So that's what the, the I see a problem is, like, someone's used to taking something, you know, let's say they're taking something that they think is 200 milligrams, but it's only 50 milligrams. Right. Well, I need this much to take in order to get the results, right? Right, right. Well, then they do get a hold of something that's 200 milligrams, and now they're overloading their system. True. You know what I mean? True. But how, don't you miss the days where everything was real? You, know, you don't have to worry about something being fake? <laughs> yeah, being but... done you know, in, the, I, in the garage or somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy, man. But, you know, here's the thing. Like, like faking steroids, like, if, if, if you're going to be a dealer, faking steroids wouldn't be a good... Thing for your business because you really want repeat customers because you want the risk factor to be lower mm. and if you have people that are already doing stuff you know not trying to reach out and get all these new people you know yeah it doesn't make sense to fake stuff yeah it but, there's so, but there's so much fake stuff out there at the end of the day when people are all of a sudden are aware of that whatever the brand is then all they do is just relabel it with a different name and go back on the market it's still the same shit yeah you know, and then well, another thing, I, another I would thing. never order nothing from China, to be honest. Oh, hell no, yeah. <laughs> you know? So, um, 
I don't know to, if there's a I don't know if there's a definitive thing you can say, okay, this is gonna solve the thing all across the board. I don't think there is a you know, it's it's gonna be on an individual basis because everybody has different health issues. Yeah, you know. Do you always check do you have you always checked yourself to make sure everything's good in the green light? Yeah. So you always paid attention to yeah, that? Because a lot of people I'd don't come off for, you know, quite a few months. Yeah. And then I'll go in and get blood work done. You know. Yeah. It's just it's just the logical thing to do, you right. know, and especially at at my age, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Do do you feel anything? Is there anything that's compromised now after all these years? You diet down, train hard, and supplement smart for months. When the time comes to step on stage, don't leave your tan to chance. Go with the pros. Pro Tan. Number one worldwide since 1987 and the official sponsor of the Olympia for the last 15 years. Don't step on stage without it. Pro Tan. Um, Where you could say, okay, this could be because I'm a bodybuilder or is this... this... I, I think just because of all the training, uh -huh. it's like, okay, I've had four different shoulder surgeries because I've, you know... Oh, really? So you had... Yeah, I've, I've, I've really, you know, torn up my shoulders doing, trying to go heavier and heavier and uh -huh. all that. So I'm like, okay, well, maybe I'm not going to go heavier anymore, you know? Right. But I can still get a good chest workout or a back workout just by, you know, training harder and smarter, right, you know? Right, right. But, you know, and I've, and I've had a knee surgery before. I mean, I think... You know, as as you get older, if you keep grinding away doing the same stuff, you're probably going to come up with an injury here or there. Yeah. You know, and if you're pushing yourself to win shows, you're going to be pushing yourself. You're you're always going to encounter some kind of injuries. You know, you right. know that. Yeah. You know, but you know how you deal with them, how you get through them, and how you prevent having more of them. You know, all comes down to your you know education as basically your your education as a bodybuilder of what you can what right. you can do and what you should do. Right. I remember you had a phase where you were training with Lee Priest. Mm -hmm. Tell yeah. me about that. Tell us that about your experience training with Lee Priest. Um, it was a riot. Every day in the gym with him was a, a riot. He's just... He's how, did biggest, guys, how did you guys come smart together? He's ass in the world. Well, I had met him at the 2005 Ironman. And uh, it, that was the year that, um, I guess, King Kamali was in the top five. So was Troy Alves. And uh, that was my pro debut. Little Heidi Tata was his his he, debut. Heidi Tata Yamagishi, yeah. yes. And I'm like, well, Craig Titus was in that show too. And anyhow, he was in the back trying to pump up on the sink or something, and it freaking broke off the wall, and it freaking <laughs> water everywhere. Who and Titus did? Yeah. And he's like, oh Jesus, something happened in there, you know? And we're like, oh, gee. <laughs> you know? And so they had to they had to like basically get us all out of the the dressing rooms and everything while they came in and tried we to fix it. Because it was just flooding out the whole place. I mean, oh, literally, wow. he had broke this thing off the wall and it was just gushing. Oh wow! You know, like some water main or something. You know. So and that's where you met Lee? Yeah, that's where I met Lee. And then he he had moved into the Phoenix area and he wanted someone just to film his workout. So my friend of mine said, Hey, I'll I'll film your workouts and stuff. And then so um So how come he moved to but you guys trained down in Cave Creek, right? Yeah. Yeah. So did he, he was in Scottsdale. He was oh, in Scottsdale. Oh, okay. So he we, moved we to trained Scottsdale. at Maximum for a time. We trained over it at a, it was the Gold's gym at the time, which is now EO's off of Rain Tree. And uh, then we trained up at the Freedom Fitness where I was working and my boss gave us, you know, free reign of the whole place whenever right. we wanted it. So. so what was it like training with Lee Priest? That was great. I mean, you know, he's, he likes to do the volume approach. I mean, we'd spend three hours training. You really? Know? I mean, literally just trying to kill each other. You know, <laughs> hey, you want to do some of these? Yeah, sure. You know, <laughs> do some of those too. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but he did a real big, long volume approach and, you know, very strong. We were pretty much um, at the time, he was like... 240 pounds at what five five on a good day five five no five, Lee Priest ain't no five day. five I have him on the podcast later I will ask him <laughs> okay you know I think but, he's like five three but five four. whatever but he was you know about 240 and my 240 was you know five eight right so I wasn't nearly as thick but I could most of the stuff I could keep up with him on except for like some of the arm stuff you yeah. know what I mean because he was just crazy strong in the arms, you know. Yeah, his arms are ridiculous. Yeah. Crazy. Still, you see him, what he looked like right now? You know, I haven't really seen a lo uh, recent picture, you he know. Is, uh, he somewhat did a tra transformation. Yeah. So he's 50. Okay. And he's transforming. In seven weeks, he completely changed his physique again. So uh -huh. it looks to me like he wants to compete again. Yeah. I'm not sure if he has. I will ask him later, though. I mean. Yeah. But tell me about the, the, the training session, though. Did you guys... Um, he did, was just did, a joker, man. Was he, he still was, competing that time? You know, I think he had some problems with the IFBB at the time. 
Okay, you know so I mean? it was because already it, going on. Yeah, he was not able to compete and stuff, but he he could just kept training. He just loved training, so you know. Right. How how and long he would write articles and things, and you know. Yeah, how long were you guys training? Together? We trained for about a year oh, straight. Okay. You know, almost a year straight together. And I mean, my my arms came up a lot over that time. You know. <laughs> that's awesome, though. That's awesome. I mean, but you know, the dude's got a sense of humor. He's just the biggest he, he smart ass on the planet. I love the guy. You know, haven't heard from him from a while, but you know, was he married out here? I don't remember if he was. I think he had a girlfriend or something at a time, but I don't think he was married out here. It was it was after the marriage broke. I up. wonder how he came to Arizona, because he wasn't Cal. He wasn't Venice. Mm-hmm. And then uh, yeah, he must have found, probably met some girl from around here. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, you know? he's, he's, he's funny. I can't wait to have him on. Here's later my to two talk o'clock. To him. <laughs> he showed me on his phone. <laughs> so he's been back in Australia for quite some time now. Yeah, I guess he wanted he wanted to do the mat, the the NABA, you know, because I mean, you know, half the world thinks the NABA Mr. Universe is the best bodybuilder, and the other half the world thinks that the IFBB Mr. Olympia is the best. Oh, bodybuilder. it's not even close. But I, I know, but you know, in, I used to do NABA. Yeah, yeah. I was NABA, NABA before I switched over to the IFBB. But right. no, you can't even but compare. The NABA wasn't really strong in the U.S. You know what I mean? Right, right. I mean, they had they had NABA. Remember Bob Kruskin? Yep, Gruskin. Gruskin, yeah. Gruskin, mm-hmm. yeah. Yep. He was the president of the NABA oh, okay. Association. And yeah. I remember because I got a special invite to compete at the universe in 1993 from the German, German Klaus Hoffmann. He was the world president of the NABA. He invited me. Wow. I, comp- I basically flew to, to England with the German national team, and I went there to represent the United States. I've never met anybody from the U.S. team, never met Bob. So in the first year, in 1993, when I hmm. stepped on that stage, I remember we did that kind of the ceremony to begin, when, you know, where the teams worked together. I was there with, uh, what's his name? He passed already. Rest in peace. Joe DeAngelis. Oh, yeah. You remember okay. Joe? Yeah, I remember him. He was, comp- he was representing the U.S. He was in my class. Uh-huh. And I was the only one that made top five. Shit. In, my, in, in the universe. And this is how our first time, I didn't know anybody. So they knew there was somebody coming, but they didn't know who it was. And uh, that's why I know the Naba back then was a little bit bigger than it is now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was big in other countries, especially in Europe. Right, yeah. You know? But you can't compare the Naba universe to the other. No, Olympia. no. The IFBB is, is definitely the, the industry standard. Yeah. Because you know? yeah. I remember I, I, when I won the universe in 95, then I was qualified. I did the Pro Universe, which is the only show they have. Mm-hmm. To be, if yeah. you're a pro, yeah. that's the only show they have. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and that's when I said, no, I need to get to the IFBB. Yeah. You know? So. Your goal is to do the the Olympia, the the Masters Olympia next year. Yeah, maybe year. in twenty three. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, it'll, it'll probably be in Romania. Oh jeez. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got a passport. I hope it will be expired by then. But. Yeah. So yeah, it'll probably be in Olympia. So did you did you watch? Do you follow the Arnold? The you know, I Arnold? haven't really followed the the past couple of them. You know. No, really. Uh uh-uh. uh So what? So what do you what do you what do you do in in your in your in your free time in your spare time if you don't look at bodybuilders? What do you do? What's your hobbies? I build stuff. I, you know, put together people's gyms for them and stuff. Oh, so you, so you put gyms together? Yeah, I can put together gyms for people. and uh, I. Uh, so you have great connections to the equipment companies? Well, not really to the equipment companies. I, I usually deal more in used stuff, you oh, know. okay. And, uh, but, uh, you know, I, you know, I just, uh, you know, like to, like to train and I, you know, play a little guitar and, you know, yeah. just nothing. So, but you're not sitting at home yeah, watching I don't, I don't, bodybuilding you know, sometimes shows? Sometimes it's like, I just don't want to s- just... Yeah. See all the, you know. I mean, you know, I can. I, I mean, I'll, I'll look at the lineup, like who won the who who won the top five, and go, oh, okay, you know. Yeah. But I won't go back and check, you know, watch the whole thing, you know. The right, show, right, right. Know? I mean, I can understand it after so many years. You know, you can get tired of, you know, just so it's not, it's not that I'm tired. Building. It's just that you know, instead of watching that show, I'd rather be going and training myself, or you know. Do you follow the Olympia still? Yeah, still, still follow. The so you watch the Olympia, or you just get the results? I just kind of get the results and look and see, yeah. and, and if, if if you know, I'll kind of look and see what you know who who looked good. And so you would know. you know? Would you know the top six? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Should I put you to the test? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, d- let me let me just put one name out there. Nick Walker. Does that ring a bell? Yeah. So d- what do you think of Nick Walker? He turned he's pro thick. two years ago. Yeah, he's real. Thick. Thick, well muscled bodybuilder, yeah. He turned pro two years ago. I think he was 25 or he's 26 now, I mm-hmm. think. And in and, and that last year, his rookie, no, his rookie year was the same year he turned pro. He turned pro, I think, at the North Americans, if I'm not mm-hmm. mistaken. And he went straight to the uh, Chicago Pro. It uh-huh. was a couple of weeks later where he placed f- uh, fourth, fifth, or sixth, somewhere around there. So he didn't do too well. Right. 
But then he uh, went back to the drawing board and came back in 2021 and had an awesome year by winning the Chicago Pro, mm -hmm. going on to win the Arnold in his rookie year, mm -hmm. I mean, the second year, and placed top five at the Olympia. That's good. So just a couple of days ago, I watched, uh, I was in Pittsburgh to see the, um, the guest poses, because Jim Mannion brings out the top guys mm -hmm. to guest pose every year, and it was Nick Walker, Derek Lunsford, the two twelve oh, Olympia. Yeah, I, I saw that online. I saw Brandon guys. Curry, and uh, who was the other yeah, one? Those guys are stinking. Who am I missing Angus, right man. now? Uh, Brandon Curry, Nick Walker, uh, Derek was Lunsford. It, was it uh, Labrada? Was it? Oh, Hunter not? Labrada, of yeah. course. <laughs> see, oh, too much bodybuilding. <laughs> and uh, it was good to see these guys come in to guest pose in off season in all great guest posing shape. The guy that yeah, impressed they had great separation. I yeah, mean. the guy that impressed me the most was Derek Lunsford, the two twelve Mr. Olympia. Yep. I think he stepped on that stage at two sixty. Yeah, he was and, thick as a brick, man. And Jeez. was was in the best condition of all three, all, all four. Yeah, he did look good. And, uh, and come to find, you know, and, and I'm telling myself, I said, how is he going to make top, I mean, 212? Yeah. Well, I mean, how did Flex Lewis do it for so many years? You know, I, mean, I know, but I don't think Flex Lewis got that big in that condition. I know Flex got big, but, you know, Flex said he said it was at his best around 225. Mm -hmm. And then he had to go down to, two, to 212. Right. So, but to see what Derek Lunsford did, how much weight he put on in the right places, his quads stood out. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, crazy, yeah. I was I was impressed. I was like, this guy could literally jump into the open this year, win a show, guaranteed, qualify for the for the Open Olympia, and I say he would place easy top five. I could agree with that. Yeah, yeah. unbelievable. You know, another good guy is that. Uh, Guy, one of Milos's guy is uh, Samson Duada. Samson Dauda, yeah, Dauda, from England. Yeah, well, yeah he's, he's unbelievable. Phenomenal. Yeah, phenomenal. Tall, it's got everything. Yeah. It's got he's it's going to be another superstar. Yeah, you know he had a very good showing at the at the Arnold, and uh, I think that he is the one that because I just saw him guest pose at three hundred pounds and looked unbelievable. Yeah, I saw some of the clips from that. Yeah, really good. That's crazy. That's crazy. Who's your favorite athletes today? Your favorite. Give me your favorite two. No, favorite athlete in each category that you remember. In each category. Well, you say those are your favorite guys. Well, um, you know, Bumstead is good. Okay, oh. the dude can pose. He's got a complete physique. You know, mm -hmm. and he and he's not so hum humongous that he's awkward. Right. You know what I mean, right, he, right, and right. he can move. Right. You know what I mean, and and that's what I kind of like. And that other guy. Uh, um, Diesel, uh, rough diesel. Yes, yeah, that guy's great. Terrence Ruffin. Yeah, he's good. He's good, and he and he's classic yeah. to the to the to the T. Yeah, he can do those classic stuff like nobody. Yeah, and another. So guy, you still follow the stuff? Yeah, sport. you know, and, and who's the <laughs> other guy? Uh, Roosevelt Franklin. No, uh, Logan Franklin. Logan Franklin. Yeah, it's like an Arnold kind of guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and and and, and he, he always puts together nice routines, you know, yeah. really really good routines. So you still pay attention to the people that pose well. Yeah, I kind of do it, yeah. you know, and I kind of like watching uh, what's his name. Uh, uh, I met his dad years ago, uh, Sergio. Sergio, yeah. okay, Sergio Oliva. Yeah. yeah, he's also yeah. an entertaining poser. He puts effort into posing. Yeah, you know, I appreciate that because you know some of these guys just just like you know what they don't they don't <laughs> they care judge posing with. anyway, so why pose? <laughs> yeah. But that's awesome, see man. See how much least they can get away with doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, that's awesome, man. I'm looking forward to seeing you killing it in 10 and a half weeks, you know? And, uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully, I mean, I don't see it on here, but hopefully they put some price money up for these guys because, you know, I mean, just because uh, they're, they're over 40 don't mean they, they, they're they not working just as hard and yeah. dieting and, and, the, and the food, especially now, everything's more expensive. So I think I would appreciate it. Hopefully somebody comes forward with a, with a sponsorship for the price money so you guys don't have to fly all the way to Pittsburgh for nothing. Yeah. You know? No. Well, I already got it covered, you know, stuff that I... You got, do you have sponsors? No. I pretty much sponsor myself. Oh, so, really? Yeah. I don't, I've never really had a, a sponsor. Are you, are you active on social media? No. Nah. Not really. Not at all. Not really. I mean, I, I've got a. I uh, figured that. You know I why? I got an Instagram account, you know, and I just kind of, you know, whatever. I figured that. You know why? I, I mean, I, I probably need to get some... <laughs> professional help with that so I could get some more clients, you know. I, I figured that you don't do a lot of that stuff when I asked you for your email. He said, I don't do email. It's <laughs> <laughs> like, Rusty, still back there. <laughs> well, you can text me. I know, I know. When you said, I don't do email, I was like, okay. He doesn't put up with none of that bullshit. 
So, yeah, I mean, maybe, you know, I think that going on social media a little bit, especially, you know, because you, you can offer so much posing, posing advice to people, you know. You can literally, well, not only locally. Guys. You know, uh, uh, Brian Jones? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I, I Lord Jones. When, when he plays top five in that, uh, that one Olympia, I, I helped him with his routines. I know, that, I know. And I pointed that out while and, I was uh, broadcasting. Um, and then I've I worked a little bit with uh, who's the new guy that just popped up? He trains at our gym. Uh, oh, Tom, Joe, uh, uh, Duong. Uh, 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 Tony Duong. Tony, yeah. yeah, he's he's good. I like him. He's yeah. got he's got everything a champion needs. And then uh, he's I'm, qualified I'm, for the Olympia. Yeah. And then uh, I'm I'm working with another guy uh, named uh, um, drawing a blank here. Um, Arizona. Yeah, he trains at our gym too. Um, Troy was training him a little bit. Oh, the short guy. Yeah, he's got from the, New York. He's got the, the, yes, the, yes, the high top. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What the heck, why am I drawing a blank on his name right now? Yeah, I don't, I don't, um, I, just, I don't remember his name either. But I know exactly who you're talking about. I just talked to him yesterday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he's classic physique too. He's yeah. he's a pro, right? Yeah, he's a pro. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. is he getting ready for a show? Yep, he's got a show coming up, like in I think it's eight weeks or something. I think he's doing the. Something in Brazil or something or whatever. So, oh yeah. You know, I don't know. Why would people fly so far when they can get shows in the U.S.? I don't know. If they think it's it's you know I'll go to Brazil because it's easier, they'll, it, they'll they'll be sadly mistaken. Yeah, it's, it's a, it'll be a wake an awakening. They got a lot, lot of great talent, 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 talent over there. there. Yeah. And who is the guy who just won the uh, Brazil Arnold Classic or the the South American Arnold Classic? Oh, Rafael Brandao. He looked pretty good. Yeah. 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 He I had him good. here like. Four weeks, five weeks before the show. Uh huh. You know, he 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 uh, he, he goes to Las Vegas to train with uh, Flex Lewis. Yep. You know, and uh, he yeah. reminded me a lot of uh, very the, the Cuban uh, Manny. You know. Oh yeah, yeah. Sim very Big symmetrical, Manny. very great balance. All muscle belts are there. Great the condition was was good. It wasn't the best, but it was good enough to win the Arnold Brazil. And I think he's going to be a great uh, addition to the Olympia because representing Brazil means a lot right now because yep. their fan base is ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, huge. I mean, I, I wish Americans would be the same because the Brazilians, they're right behind their athletes like the Iranians. So yep. you can't say nothing negative because they will kill you online. <laughs> Seriously. Really? <laughs> Jill Rusty, thank you for taking the time, man. I really appreciate it, man. And, yeah, uh, thanks for having me. Hopefully we can bring you back after you win the, the Masters World. Is it the World? Yeah, World Man's yeah, Masters, Masters World, World Championship. Yep. Mm -hmm. So we're looking forward to uh, for you. I know you're going to kill it because you always do, so... Good luck with that, and uh, hopefully Thanks. we'll get you back. Cool. <laughs> All right, brother. Right on. There you go.